Well, hello and welcome back. We are continuing our series of uh, tutorials, basically. We're going through our uh, pursuit of Python certification. We've gone through a lot of different topics, and today we are going to go through File I.O. And let me uh, clean up a couple of just random stuff that's open. And so there's going to be a couple of files that are going to be of, of note in our repository if you're looking at some of the uh, some of the examples you're following along uh, we'll have files.py but there's also going to be a file we create and there's also which should already exist there's going to be a readme.md file and we're using that just for examples you can uh, adjust those however you need so first thing you need to do in dealing with a file is you have to be able to open it you want to open it and do something with it. In Python, it's pretty easy. Open is just a file name, a mode, and then optionally, you have an encoding. So I can do this, or this one would be valid. Now, the R is for read. There's a W for write. And then you can also do a B for binary. But let's, let's sort of look at what we've got so far. So let's say we open this, and I'm just gonna do a little, uh, this is a nice little snippet or whatever. So I'm gonna open the file. I'm gonna read the first line of the file. And then while that line is not an empty line, I'm just gonna print it, and then I'm gonna read the next line of the file. And then I'm gonna close it. Because once you open it, you want to close it. Otherwise, depending on how things go, you could have uh, resource locks and stuff like that. Now, typically what's going to happen, let me actually get rid of that first. Typically what's going to happen, so let's just do this. I'm going to run this one through. So if I go here, so the readme, let me go over that. So the readme.md file, let's look at that. Whoop. There we go. Um, here. Oh, it's doing it as a markup. But... Uh, kind of like that. There we go. So that's all it is. It's pretty straightforward. And what you'll see here is it has the that tag and it comes into that. Now note that it's actually doing the um, when I do a print, that print has embedded in there basically. We can't see it. It has the uh, the line, the line terminator, end of line. So if I come in here. Um, well, that's because I'm doing a print. So it's going to do that every time. If I did that without the line feed, uh, and I could pull that off, I could come in and I could actually replace the uh, the line feed in it. And then I would be okay. Let's see if I do. Now another one, I should be sure, is I can do, there's a limit I can do. So if I do a limit, oh, let's just say 10. Now you'll see here, it's going to read, but it's only going to go uh, 10 characters out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's only going to read that, it's only going to pull that line out to a certain number of characters. But notice that it's still, uh, if you look here, like, so, uh, oh. So the first one I did, I read in a line. But then I come into the loop, and these are all at a length of 10. And so it's not actually, it's limiting it. So it's either going to be, in this case, either 10 characters or the end of line, which can be valuable at times where it's like, okay, I want to read, but if I hit the end of a line, then I'm just going to you know cut it off there which would be fairly useful if you run into things like, I don't know if you're doing like you know, some comma separated value or some sort of uh, file separator, uh, some character separated text file or something like that. So we can do that, we can read, we can do a read line. Uh, we can also do, let's just go ahead and do this, is we can do a straight read. Now this one's gonna do by number of characters. So if I do read, then it goes all the way, it's going to go all the way out. 
um, let me do this. Let's just change that so we do both of them a read. And so now, when I do it, I'm not getting that extra line. When I do that realign, it ends up slapping essentially a, a end of line character on it. When I do a read, then it's just going to straight through and dump that thing out. And so here, I could actually do it like this. And I'm going to get the same thing because it just reads the whole file at this point. And let me get that back. Uh, let's do that. And let's do it this way. And then we're going to do it this way. We'll get all of those examples in there. So let's do it. Uh, let's read it 15 at a time. So let's make sure all of those. Oh, let's do this. Um, so note also, uh, let's see. File. A at a time. And this one will be just read. Complete file. Let's do it that way. So now if we look. Oh. Now, this is an interesting one. Because what you're going to see here is not what you probably expected. Before, when I did all these things, they work fine. But here, like read 15, there's nothing. Read the complete file, nothing. And that's because F, that little pointer to the file, has gone all the way through. So I can come up here, and I can do, um, I, can, I can actually have like a lot of different options I can do here. As you can see, is I've got a lot of your normal functions available. But what I can do is I can come in and I can open it again, or I can do close and then open it. And let me go ahead and get rid of the encoding so you can just see the difference. Uh, here. And so now we're going to see them. And Notice that there's no real difference in what I'm seeing because this is UTF-8 in general. So if I don't close it, that uh, file pointer has gotten to the end the first time through, and now it's not going to do anything for me any good. It's you know it's not terribly useful. So if I close it, reopen it. That's uh, that's going to probably be the easiest way to deal with it, uh, particularly when you focus on the. Uh, the functions that we're going to have within the um, within the certification. Now, another thing I can do. Uh, well, okay, so we've got read line and we've got read. Let's go ahead and close that file. And now let's look at writing. So I come in and I'm going to open this test.txt file, which doesn't currently exist anywhere. Let's just look at it. So if I do that. That text you're going to see doesn't exist. But now what I can do is I'm going to do f dot write. Um, this is a line. This is a second line, and close it. Actually, I'm not going to close it. So let's do this first. So let's go through here oh, and run it. And it says create a simple file. Well, did it create the file? Yes, it is. Let's see what it says. So notice that it ran these lines together, even though those separate writes, then there was issues with that. Now, that F close doesn't isn't really needed. And this one exactly because once uh, Python, once the, the script completes, the application is done, it closes all the file handles. 
However, if I do this and I try to work with it within the application before it's closed out, it, before a close has either been explicitly, like here called, or implicitly because the script is done, there's going to be issues with it. I'm not going to be able to find that file. It's not going to be in the state that I think it is. So what I can do here is I can do this. we go I'm gonna run that and now let's look at that file and notice I've got this is a line and this is a second line now notice that what I've got here is um, <clears throat> test.txt has been rewritten when I did that open it was rewritten but if I come in and do this I'm sorry, I can't do both. So I can't do write, I can do append. So it's an A. Um, let's do this. This is create a simple file. Let's do this, let's do append to file. And so I've got to close it so I can reopen it in an append mode. And now, I run it. Uh, let's see. Oh, did I print it out? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I did. So I did write, write, print, print, pen is a file. I do that. There we go. And so now, if I cat, there we go. So now I've got it. So in this script, so now you can see where I hit this twice. When this script runs, I blow away the file that exists this time because I open it for write, not for append. This time I come in and I do a, an append. And now I can do all of those same things in a binary fashion. So let me first do, as we mentioned that, so let's do this. So let's go in and do this readme, except for open it in binary. And I'm going to do fitness.read. Uh, and let's just do this. And let's see what it looks like if I open it in binary mode. Oh, there. Now here we see it's got this little B because basically it took all of that stuff. And now I can see my line feeds. So this isn't a string anymore. It's not doing the printable query. It's just taking the whole thing. So now I could take, uh, let's see, do I have, I don't have like a good binary sitting around, but um, I can open things like uh, executables or other binary files. That also means that I can do, uh, let me just do this. Like, so if I do input text, and then I just insert one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or zero. Uh, well, I'm not gonna, let, first, let's see what happens when I do a read line. And so here, when I do the binary and I do the read line, it still recognizes my line, but it's a binary string and it brings that end of line in there, that line feed in there. I can also do that so like if I do, let's take the same thing and let's do, let's see what happens. If I do the same thing and I create a simple, I'm just gonna call it a B file instead of typing binary. Well, shoot, I probably should just for note's sake. And I'm gonna do B. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, oh, so here we go. Binary mode does not take an encoding argument. Oops, sorry, I forgot about that. I knew that. Because binary is, is straight binary. Encoding is for strings. 
And so here, what I'm going to see in the simple binary file, when I do that, byte slate ob like object is required, not a string. So I can't send it a string in this case. I could say, um, let's just call it temp equals this and write temp. And let's do it again. Temp equals this. And let's just bail out. So let's not append to it at this point. We'll just do the open and write. So now we run it. We're going to see again, it's not a string. Even though it's writing temp, it's a string. It's not a bytes object. So instead, I can do this. and make it a byte. And now it runs. And so I've got this simple binary file created. And if I do, what did I call that? Test.txt. And see, it looks basically the same. But now it's saying that this is bytes. Because I can also do the same thing. And so now I could take uh, temp equals, let's just get rid of this part. One comma two comma three comma four comma five comma six. So temp's now an array. Uh, but it still doesn't like it as a list, so I'd have to convert that over. I don't think I can do it this simply. Oh no, because it's going to do that. So. If I do it like this, it's going to treat it essentially, it's going to say those are hard bytes. So it's going to, yeah. So if I test that, yeah. So I just have that, it's a direct version of that. But now I could do bytes, um, I can do a byte array and, and things like that where um, I can write those out and I can write characters as needed into it. So now I can actually get pretty specific with what I do. Um, let's just do a same thing let's just do like temp equals 12 and let's whoop, let's see what it says when I set an integer note integer doesn't count so I have to get it converted to bytes so I could probably do this to bytes and I need to give it a length so let's say a length of one And byte order, I don't think I need that. So let's see. So if I do that, oh, I do need byte order. And I don't know my byte order offhand. Let's just see what that does. But what I can do is I can go in, I'm not gonna get too deep into it in this one, uh, mostly because of where I'm at. Oh, it's either little or big, oh, big Indian or little Indian which there we go and so now oh, if i look it's what is that test.txt yes and so that's a, it's writing that character so i need something that's like uh, let's do 68 oh and that's just one that's the problem so it's like this two Let's see what that does. There, okay. So now it's creating, it's a capital D because that is, if you do a 68, uh, the ASCII code 68, it's a D. So it's converting that in for us as we look at the file. But it's actually, um, you see this like null D as it's putting that space before it. So you can play around with that and do binary uh, reads and writes. I think that was everything I really wanted to mess with. Uh, you can also do a read into. So I can do, uh, which basically is just going to put.
push one value into another. So if I do this, uh, I'm going to open it for read binary uh, temp equals f dot read into. Oops, it's not that way. Hmm. Uh, let me do it this way. I'm going to copy and paste some stuff because it's easier that way. So file name equals just that text. So I have to create a byte array. And oops, I've got to import OS. Because this is where I get obviously OS.path. And so I'm going to get the size of the file. I'm going to open it as a read into. Uh, I'm going to open it as F. So this one's a little different. Instead of doing uh, assigning it and then doing something with it, I'm just going to say, hey, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to read into my buffer the file, and then I'm going to do print buffer. And it's not going to like it because it's a byte array, I think. No, it does. And so it just tells me that that is a byte array. If I do a string, I don't know if I can do a string of a byte array. I'm going to find out in a minute. Uh, yep. So it doesn't really do much for me. Again, uh, where was that? Up here, you can see. So it's really, it's that hex value. Uh, it's a capital D because the ASCII of 68 is a capital D. So it's actually, I'm seeing it uh, converted into that string because of the output we're seeing here. I think that's enough for now. We've gone pretty deep into files. Uh, it should allow you the basics of reading and writing and doing some stuff with them and understand what you need for this certification. So we'll uh, we'll call it a, a an episode for here. And uh, go out there and have yourself a great day, a great week, and we will talk to you next time.